my weapons like I like my coffee. Scalding. to see me, right? Delgado may let it slide, but I don't take kindly to snitches. There's always a choice. You made yours. If the time comes you ever need my help, I'll make mine. You screwed me out of the most lucrative route I have. It's going to take me months to set up something even remotely as good. Not to mention getting the UC off of my trail. Don't put this on me. I got you in and gave you cover. You decided to return that favor by blowing mine. You may have fooled Delgado and Neva, but I don't trust you, Rook. At this point, you better find that legacy. Because to me, that's the only saving grace you've got. Jasmine tells me that you not only brought us the comm spike, but an entire prototype UC ship. I'm impressed, Rook. Very impressed. Yeah, yeah, nice try, Rook. We know you didn't have a choice. Juan gave us the full rundown of your little smash and grab operation. She's actually pretty pissed, in case you didn't notice. Claims you blew her cover. If one doesn't like how things have gone, and she wants to bail on her share, that's her problem. Now, on to the business at hand. Jasmine, are you there? Yep, I'm here, boss. What's up? How's it going? I already have two of my crew tearing the ship apart from one end to the other. Comm spike shouldn't be too tough to extract. I'm looking forward to seeing what those UC techs have been up to. Keep me posted. All right. That leaves our electromagnetic atmosphere problem. And I think we've discovered a solution. There's a corporation in the city of Neon called Jennerdyne. They're responsible for the massive conduction grid that powers the city. We get our hands on their electrical absorption tech, and Jasmine swears she can tame it to handle Bannock 4. you damn right she can. My girl can piece together a jump engine with her eyes shut. Literally, I've seen her do it. Lost good money on that bet. All right, let's not get carried away, neighbor. Now, why don't you give us the info on our Neon contact? You get to meet up with the lovely Estelle Vincent. She's had her deft little fingers on the pulse of Neon for some time now. Whatever info you need, I guarantee she can get. Estelle is one of the most reliable captains we have in the fleet. If I want something done, there's none of the typical bullshit. It gets done, and afterward we all split the cash. No, no, no. There is no getting along here. You are going to do everything she asks. Follow her instructions to the letter. She is valuable to the fleet. You piss her off and we lose her as a contact, you're going to be answering to me. Estelle will be waiting at Madame Savage's place. I'd say don't keep her waiting, but chances are she won't mind. Girl loves her liquor. And keep your eyes on the price. Neon's one big distraction for people like us, so I want you focused. We are one step away from Quix's legacy and we cannot afford any screw-ups. Thanks for making me look good. I would have had to kill you otherwise.
need some medical? Got some health issues you need help? Sure. Whatever keeps you off my operating table. Try not to die out there.
done. You're cleared. Archangel flew in some top secret program not too long ago. It seems you had quite the eventful mission on your hands. Betraying Juan Dayu for cover was a dangerous gambit, but it seems to have paid off. You still have the Crimson Fleet's trust, and you were able to spare lives in the process. But you did so with an abundance of stealth and restraint. That's exactly what we're looking for in a CISDEF operative. Excuse me, sir. I hate to interrupt, but there's still the matter of the comm spike to discuss. Yes, of course, Lieutenant. Time is short and we should get to the matter at hand. Please give me your report. With the acquisition of the comm spike, the fleet is one step closer to Crix's legacy. And the more people we arrest, the greater the chance that your infiltration is discovered. We're working against the clock here, so let's start by discussing the status of the comm spike. That all depends on what you've brought back from your mission. Aside from your eyewitness testimony, I assume you have the usual evidence that could lead to her incarceration? I can take it off your hands once we complete your debriefing. But at the moment, I'm far more concerned about the comm spike. Then it's just a matter of time before she reverse engineers it to fit the fleet's purposes. So what does Delgado have you doing next? Has he solved the Bannock 4 problem? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant. Your ship will need special protection to ensure the electromagnetic disturbances in the planet's atmosphere don't fry your circuits. The conduction grid? That's... brilliant. But is it actually possible? It's 80-year-old tech. Sorry, sir. The conduction grid is how Neon generates its power. It essentially absorbs lightning strikes and converts it to usable energy. It would take a hell of an engineer to modify the technology to handle Bannock 4's EM field. An engineer, like Jasmine Durand. That's the case. Inform our contacts on Neon that our operative will be touching down there in the near future. Absolutely, sir. And before you depart, I wanted you to know that your efforts are helping us gain interest among my superiors. They're finally beginning to believe that we can take down the Crimson Fleet and make amends for the UC's embarrassing mistake. Of course I am, but it's a calculated risk. The fact that our common enemy owes its existence to the United Colonies, of course. It was the riot at the lock touched off by Jasper Creeks that inspired him to create the Crimson Fleet in the first place. Thanks to your assistance, we'll be able to rectify that mistake. 
and Mast will authorize an all-out assault. You've already come this far, which makes you the most resourceful operative in SysDev's history. If we move in and attack the fleet now, we might not have the resources to bring them down. In addition, they're holding all the tech you need to get to Crix's legacy, so the smartest move is to let you get to it and then bring it to us. I'm confident that once Crix's legacy is in our possession, we'll get the support we need from my superiors to take the fleet down. All right, I suppose that's all for now. I'll be looking forward to your next report. Good luck. And please, be careful. Oh, I was hoping we might run into one another again. Your timing is most fortuitous. I'm on the verge of something, but I don't quite have all the information I need. You have no idea how much I appreciate that, truly. Of course, now that I understand more about what's going on, it seems plain as day. And yet I never would have imagined it before. The tertiary trunks have also liquefied their interiors, but they're not vibrating. I thought perhaps it was some sort of defect, but it's much simpler. They're listening. It means it is ready to reproduce. I believe this tree is sending vibrations out over massive distances and expecting to detect sympathetic vibrations in return. As of yet, there's been no response. I suspect that will not change, that a response is impossible, and that's very, very bad news. We're continuing to see an increase in the strength and frequency of the vibrations. I don't know how much more significant it will become. If there's no response, the tree may vibrate itself and some nearby portion of the city to destruction. Now, as of yet, there has been no response, and clearly none of the nearby individuals are a correct match. 
While it can't be ruled out that the intended recipient of these messages was cut down during the city's expansion, there is one other possibility. Over a hundred years ago, the United Colonies and the Free Star Collective emerged from the Narian War. As a gesture of peace and goodwill, a near-literal olive branch, one of the trees from New Atlantis, was offered to the leaders of Aquila City. Certainly wouldn't have been my first suggestion. Something about the common roots of humanity or some such. Politicians and their metaphors. Of course you can't just uproot a native species and plonk it down on some other planet in a totally different environment and expect it to grow. Clearly no exobotanists were consulted ahead of time. The end result was wholly predictable. The tree died within a few short years. Clever, but no, not necessarily. The tree died, yes, but branches were kept. At least one still exists in the museum there in the city. If I had that branch, I could get DNA samples and then using various data I've gathered, I could attempt to simulate a response. We could then broadcast that response and hopefully calm down our friend here. But as I say, I need that branch. I knew you would understand. The museum in Aquila City is under the supervision of one Miss Kassler, I'm told. I don't know anything about her, but hopefully she'll be willing to listen to reason and assist our cause. All right, off you go. We don't have any time to waste.
Another day? What do we got here? Another applicant to the UC Vanguard? Interested in doing some good for the people of the United Colonies, all while earning your citizenship and credits to boot? Glad to hear it. Signing up simple. All you've got to do is pass a flight exam and make it through one probationary mission and you're in. We'll have you working your way to UC citizenship in no time. Well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Welcome to the Freestar Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. Scan complete. Go ahead and land. Day, right? 
want the stuff or not. Our best behavior. <laughs> you looking to get zoned? Think this stuff falls from the sky? Look, I've bought Aurora on the street before. Yeah? Well, if I had a credit for every time I heard that line, I wouldn't be stuck working in this place. So, I'm guessing you're the rook that Delgado sent. Well, let me save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. Come on, give me a break. You're not exactly a top dog over there at the key, now are you? Sending me a rook to handle a job this risky is a goddamn insult. And I'm getting tired of the fleet not taking me seriously. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. Benjamin Bayou. Neon's esteemed mayor, or administrator, or whatever the hell you want to call them. He's also the greediest bastard you'll ever meet. Got his fingers on everyone's business, and the muscle to back it up. The only reason I'm allowed to operate on Neon is because I pay well to keep my involvement off his radar. The last thing I need right now is an amateur like you getting me kicked off world. All right, all right, I get the point. Let's just get this over with. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. Some fancy name the brain trusted Jennerdyne calls the room where all the power from the conduction grid is stored. Cute, right? Hey, don't look at me. I didn't build the damn thing. All I know is that the tech inside the place is valuable. <laughs> Beneath your feet, genius. It's the lowest level of neon. Jennerdyne and Xenofresh are down there, along with some of the finest cuisine in the city. I'm talking about Jennerdyne's main power plant for Neon. <laughs> All their cushy offices might be up in the Trade Tower, but the nuts and bolts of their operation are running beneath the city. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdyne, I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. Well, well, look at you. You're smarter than I thought. Jennerdyne has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this micro drive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. Yep, nepotism has its advantages. Word on the street is that the Jennerdyne gig is the only one Benjamin could get for his younger brother. He's, well, he's not the brightest. Let's just say that information can be just as lucrative as selling Aurora and keep it at that, okay? But don't worry, I promised Delgado that when it came to the conduction grid data, that's his territory. I won't touch it. Oh no, are you scared, little rabbit? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered. Jennerdyne's got their place locked down tight, but as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. 
I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. The catch is that Komiko's having a little fling with Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorico. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Pretty laid back club over in Ebside. Owner's name is Micah. She's young, but sharp as a razor and has gang muscle to back her up. The little Aurora lounge she has tucked away in the building is the real gold mine. Said she modeled it after opium dens on old earth. Bayou takes a cut of the profits, of course. The rumor says it's way less than he usually takes. No one knows why. Businesswoman. Tough as hole plating. She's the COO at Jennerdine, and I can assure you she didn't get there with her winning smile. As for her relationships, well, that's a bit more complicated. Publicly, she's having a bit of a fling with Benjamin Bayou, but rumor has it that she's just using Bayou and having a little bit of fun on the side with Micah, the owner of Euphorica. If I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to appeal to her good nature. She's a manipulative person who uses people to get what she wants. Nepotism gets him the job at Jennerdine as their chief technician, yet the guy doesn't know the first thing about electrical engineering. They obviously invented the position just to give them more on a salary, one of the many poorly kept secrets in Neon. Frankly, I think he's such a screw-up. Benjamin Bayou stuck his ass in that facility under the city to keep him out of the limelight. Not much to tell, really. Thanks to their nifty little conduction grid, they're able to provide power for the entirety of Neon. Damn thing was supposed to be some kind of miracle invention, turning lightning into usable electricity. Neat trick, right? Only catch is that you need a planet like Voli, where lightning strikes often enough to make it feasible. Guess how many of those exist? Ding! If you said zero, you're absolutely correct. So Jennerdine has been in dire financial straits for years. Loaning them credits? No, that's not how things work around here. The only reason they haven't folded is because they charge exorbitant fees for power. I'm talking two or three times what it costs in New Atlantis. Okay, now, on to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all that delicious profit? Oh, sorry, that, that's a good one, Rook. No, it's not Jennerdine's shareholders. It's good old Benny Bayou. That son of a bitch has a finger in every single pie in the sorry excuse for a city. Jennerdine's no different, all off the books, of course. How the hell do you think Brayson Bayou got the job down there? It wasn't because of his good looks or smarts, I can promise you that. Watch your step. Benjamin Bayou has eyes everywhere. I wasn't doing anything. Devin and Astis has run into some trouble. Otherwise, you don't have to lose Okay, let's settle.
settle this once and for all. Velocity? Welcome. Please, make yourself comfortable. I can offer you a drink, or perhaps you're here seeking access to our members' lounge, where you can enjoy your Aurora experience in peace. See, you just proved my point. Down your third velocity, and you're out cold. By the third chimera, you're floating on frickin' No, love, no. no, not I this know, again. You, you people should leave her alone. Yeah, what do you want right. with her? Where the hell did Micah learn to mix a drink like that anyway? Well, let's face it, some people are just... gifted. Not that it's any of your business. But we're very close. We're in love. I refuse to let anything bad happen to her. No matter how much trouble she's gotten herself into. Yeah, sure. Tell me another one. You debt collectors are low-life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. Oh my god. You're offering me money to betray her? How low can you get? Look, I'm getting really tired of this crap. Get out now. The... the Crimson Fleet? Oh my, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean anything by it, really. Sorry, I just... Well... I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know, I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the members' lounge. Of course, access to the lounge is going to cost you. And I'm not changing my mind about that. Not only will you be able to experience one of the most exclusive Aurora lounges in Neon, you also have access to our private bar. The bartender down there is a personal friend of mine, and he sells some rather... unique items. Now sit back, relax, and unwind. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Good. If you were, you'd be the 12th person I've turned away this year. What a waste. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you. But I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. I don't care if I'm allowed to or not. I'm happy to get this off my chest. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the Research and Development Division. <laughs> You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, 
is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. Isn't it obvious? Administrator Bayou clearly leaned on Ms. Komiko to get his brother hired. It's nepotism in action. None whatsoever. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? You know what? You're absolutely right. I can't allow Brayson to run this company into the ground. Hey, look. Uh, thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. I've only been working here for a few years now, and she's been my boss the entire time. Well, the big boss is our CEO, Mr. Harada. But I've actually never met him. He lives somewhere in New Atlantis, I think. Uh, she's my boss. She's fine, I guess. Look, like I said, I don't want to get into serious trouble. She might be a bit tough on all of us, but being responsible for Neon's power grid is a very stressful position. Sometimes that stress trickles down. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. Yeah, I hope so. Maybe. Need to think about it. I'd like to help you. I really would. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. People around here spend half their lives terrified about being backstabbed. And spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company. And one day, I hope to find out what it is. Sure, sure, no problem. The span above the city is outfitted with a specially developed electromagnetic absorption system. When a lightning discharge hits the span, the energy is instantly distributed across the grid to prevent overload. The energy is then transferred through a series of polyphasic capacitors and rectifiers to ensure all of the negative and positive strikes are equalized. At this point, the energy is clean, and it gets stored in massive storage cells in Neon's underbelly, from which it's parceled out and used for power. It was great speaking with you. If you'll excuse me, I have a deadline to meet. Another day, another shift.
lot, right? Galbag ATMs are Take it easy. Love the vibe of this place. Ready to relax? Certainly. Now you do understand that the fee is for unlimited use and that it's non-refundable. Excellent. Then here is your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. You're always welcome here. What's up?